feedback everyone. As many of you guys probably saw, I did a video a few months ago about how to clean your AK-74 padded rifle after shooting corrosive ammo. Well, got a ton of questions on that one about how, to, how that translates to the AR platform for those of you guys that are shooting corrosive ammo on that, like myself. And uh, today's video is basically going to be how those techniques I used before translate into the AR platform in detail. So basically, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I do as soon as I'm done shooting out here, we're still at the range. Let's go ahead and remove the uh, bolt carrier group and the uh, charging handle there. Soil on the ground because we're going to clean it anyway. This is a uh, one in five ballast all the water mix. We're going to go spray it right in the chamber. Let that run out the barrel. Also, make sure you get some right up in that gas block. We're going to get that a little bit more, excuse me, gas tube. We're going to get that a little more here later. And you just want to go ahead and run that out um, a little bit more in your trigger group. And I'm just going to put a little bit down here in the muzzle. Let that sit. And basically what I'm going to do now is just do the same thing to the uh, bolt carrier group. Anywhere that there's a hole, any of those gas ports, things like that. Just kind of get it in there while I'm at the range. Try to get some of those uh, corrosive salts off the surface. And basically, I'm going to go ahead and put the rifle together go home and complete the rest of the steps. So now that we're back at home, we're going to do the same thing we did out there at the range. Just go ahead and uh, compress these pins right here. Start with your rear. You really don't need to, but that's the way I always do it. And you're going to pull out your bolt carrier group, just like we did before, the part that we sprayed down ballast out, and pull out your charging handle. The charging handle there, we're going to throw it in the bucket. That bucket right there is hot, soapy water. The soap is completely unnecessary in terms of cleaning corrosive salts off your guns, but the uh, uh, soap does help clean some of that uh, carbon off if you use dish soap, which is what we're using there. So basically you're going to take your bolt carrier group, and I'll come over to the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. Those of you guys that are new to the AR platform. And you're going to uh, go ahead here and remove this little retaining pin. Take that out. And it's out. I'm going to chuck that in the bucket. Now you're just going to let your uh, firing pin fall out. It does. And what you're going to do here is take your cam cam pin out by pushing the bolt all the way back and then it should just come out when you rotate it 90 degrees or maybe a little resistance that's okay and there it is that's going in the soapy water and now your bolt will pull out we're gonna go ahead and throw your bolt and bolt carrier in the soapy water there and what's happening in there is being submerged in that water you are getting uh, some of those corrosive salts being washed off. What I actually do is run it back and forth just to make sure, particularly in the bolt, that the um, firing pin channel there, firing pin channel, which is this part right here, is getting some uh, water through it to rinse those corrosive salts out. Um, just a uh, caveat, I guess you could say, on what I talk about out there at the range. The water is what actually reduces that ballast all. The, our correction, <laughs> reduces the corrosive ammo, uh, corrosive residue. So it's not the ballast all doing it, it's the water. The water is going to take that away, rinse those salts off, and uh, in this mix it's the water as well, it's not the uh, soapy water. So you really can do this with all water, we're just using a couple additives to make it a little easier. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is uh, I remove the, the buffer from the rear. And the way you do that, I'll show you guys, as you push down on this little detent here on the rear, as you guys are completely new to the platform, and we're going to release the buffer in the spring and that goes in the soapy water because there is a chance that there is uh, corrosive salts on there. Now some people say they're not steel and they it can't rust, well that may be very well be true but um, I figure it's not going to hurt anything. Next up we're going to get in the chamber, I'm going to try to switch the camera angle here to get you a better angle on that. So at this angle I think you're going to be able to see what we're actually doing a little bit better. First off I go ahead and close the dust cover, I'll show you why next, and uh, kind of invert the rifle so the uh, top of the rifle is down towards the ground. The reason we're going to do that is we're going to take some water, some of that hot water out. We're going to run it right down into the gas tube. And if you invert the rifle, like the way I'm doing it here, it pretty much has no choice but to run down the gas tube. It's hard to get the water in there otherwise, so that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to do that a few times, run the water down there to make sure we're flushing those salts out of the gas tube. That's the big part that a lot of guys worry about with the ARs is that gas tube. It's a little bit different than the AKs. That said, even if you do ruin it, it's about a $15 part, and it's an extremely easy part to replace. Anyway, I'm going to do that a few more times, and then we're going to come back. The bore and the gas tube have been thoroughly rinsed. I'm just going to go ahead and take the same thing, a little bit of that soapy water, and go ahead and rinse out the uh, trigger group. The only part on there that really could get corrosion is basically your, your hammer 
in your trigger itself, but we just want to make sure to rinse it out. That aluminum on there is not going to be developing rust anytime soon. But anyway, we're going to do that. And up next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ballast oil mix again. And the reason we use a ballast oil is because it's an emulsifier, meaning that uh, when you spray that water in there, the water isn't going to stick to the surface if you use ballast oil. It's not necessary. Again, as I've said previously, you can just use water. But I like ballast oil because it pulls that water off the surfaces. Kind of a, a little extra protection, realizing that even if there are any corrosive uh, residues still on there, ballast oil is going to help take it off the surface. But anyway, all I'm going to do is spray it in that gas tube a couple more times, and then down in the chamber, and let that run through. And up next, we'll take it over to the table. Next, I'm just going to push that front pin out. You can do that earlier if you want, but we're just going to do that to make it easier to work with. And separate the lower from your upper. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, let that hammer go forward. When you do so though, guys, use your thumb to uh, do so so it doesn't slam into your receiver. I'm just going to put that upside down right now on the table. We'll do it off this side here so you guys know. But just put it upside down to let that uh, water and ballast all run out and let it dry while you're working on your upper here. So first thing you're going to do here is take a patch. This is just a piece of t-shirt and we're going to run it through the barrel get that started. And I am using a Otis clean cable which is my preferred way of cleaning out barrels but it is not necessary. If you guys have a rod and you like rods, roll with it man. Do what you gotta do. But run it through from the uh, bore end to the muzzle end. Generally you want to keep that direction for those of you guys out there. And we're just going to leave that for a minute. But you can see there it's nice and plenty dirty. So let that be, be up right there. And uh, all the parts, I took all the parts out of the water that we had out before and we're just going to dry those off. You can just set them out in the sun if you want to, but for video purposes, I'm going to go ahead and dry them off with paper towels and just wipe them down. Very, very simple process here. And we're going to set these off to the side, your buffer and your spring. We have our bulk carrier group as well. And dry that off a little bit. We're going to get into that though, a little bit more detail here next. And uh, take your bolt. And now one thing we didn't do earlier that you can do now. So you're going to go ahead and take the uh, little pin that holds your extractor in. I'll go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about that pin right there. We're going to push that through and uh, take out your extractor. Maybe, if I can, go ahead and push it through here. And just be careful of that. You know, I'm outside. I'm kind of taking a risk doing this out here. But um, generally, you want to be indoors where if it falls, you can catch it. So let's go ahead and do that. Push it all the way out. Mine's kind of stuck now, of course. And the camera starts rolling, right? But take that out. Set it aside. And, uh... That's the inside of your bolt, for those of you guys that have never done that before. That's how it looks. And take your charging handle, wipe that down, and get it dry. At this point, basically your buffer spring, your charging handle, those are as clean as they're going to be. They're good to go. They will not develop rust like that. Now, what I'm going to do here for the uh, bolt, as well as the bolt carrier, is I have uh, canned air, air here because I realize a lot of you guys don't have air compressors. I do have an air compressor that I would typically use for this. But basically what you're going to do is put it in the back of that bolt and just blow it out to make sure any uh, water residue has come out. It's brand new, huh? It helps to take the tab off. So we're just going to blow that out. Making sure there's no, no water in there. So it's good to go now. We're going to do the same on the uh, back of the bolt here, bolt carrier. Make sure all that's out. And it's good and dry. And it is the same as in here. And the same in the gas tube right here, guys. That way there's no water in there, and we know that. You can do it a little longer if you want. That's fine. And the same thing's going to happen in the gas tube. I'm just going to put this little tube right here in the gas tube and blow it out. Pushing through any of that ballast oil water mix that we last put in there. And uh, if I can get it lined up here. Blow that crap out. So, at that point... Once you've done that, your gas tube is good to go. That's the most we're going to do for this cleaning. So that's it. 
At this point, guys, cleaning this AR is just like any other AR-15 you have. I have a very detailed video on that for those of you guys that are interested in that. Basically, all you're going to do here is go ahead and take a uh, patch. We're going to go work it around in the chamber, in that star chamber in there. These are uh, polymer, I believe these are Tipton gun cleaning tools. And we're just going to work it around in that star chamber in there. Getting in there as much crap as you can out. And you're going to keep working that until these come out as clean as you want them. It's a relative term. The gun will run relatively dirty, but just keep wiping it out until they're uh, as clean as you want them. At this point, with as much water, ballast all, soapy water, all that jazz that we put in there, those corrosive salts are flushed out of this gun. So basically, I'm just going to keep doing that until we get to the next step of the cleaning process. Once you get that chamber cleaned out, we're going to go ahead and just wipe everything out with paper towels inside of your upper. And the reason we use ballast oil and water on that last part is that even if you don't get everything out here, it really doesn't matter because like I said, that ballast oil will be the emulsifier. Again, if you use water, just make sure you uh, go ahead and get everything out. You can also use that compressed air for this as well, and that'll work just fine, which I'll hit it with for video purposes. So there you go. It's dried out. Now we're going to do the same thing with our lower. Again, it's been, it's been uh, upside down, drying out the whole time. So go ahead. Hit it with a little bit of compressed air. I think we got most of it there. So at that point, we're going to set that off to the side. And uh, for the lower, basically all I'm going to do here is just work. I'm not going to put it off to the side, I guess I should say. I'm just going to work a patch around, pick up some of that carbon just real, real quick because Really, guys, your lower is not going to be all that dirty. It's just not. But the key, really, to the corrosive part of this is just getting it off the hammer and the uh, trigger, like I was saying earlier, because those are the parts that really could corrode. Just wipe it down. Wipe off your hammer, and that's pretty much it. Your lower's, your lower's done. We can go ahead and insert our uh, spring and buffer assembly from earlier. Just go ahead and slide that sucker in. You can push your buffer in over that detent on the rear. Take your click in, and there you go, your lower is good. All right, to the bolt carrier group. First thing you're gonna do is wipe everything off on the outside. Make sure you got all that water out, because the inside's already good, we already sprayed it out. Gonna go ahead and wipe that sucker out. And really, it's dry at this point anyway, but if it's not, wipe it down. All right, now what we're gonna do first off is just take our extractor, and there's a little hook in there on the extractor, clean that part out, because that's the part that's actually making contact with the uh, case of the bullet and extracting the rounds. So I take that out. Sorry about that bird in the background, guys. I know he's annoying. He's annoying me probably as much as he's annoying you. But go ahead and work your patch around in the uh, inside of where the extractor goes. And notice, guys, I'm not using any oil on this point. No CLP, no nothing. Just keep that part dry. It really doesn't need lubrication in there. The bolt will here in a minute but that part won't. So what we're going to do right now is just put our extractor back in place. All you do is put it in just the way it came out. Put it in. It doesn't matter which way you push this pin through, guys, because it will work either way. So just go ahead and push that through until it's lined up on both sides and even, which we're going to try to do here on camera. And we're good. So your bolt's done. Clean around in that face a little bit if you have some buildup in there, but I don't. And uh, next up, I'm going to take a patch and work it down in where that bolt goes. And just work it around there. You can use some CLP or oil at this point. This is actually a good place to use it. But this one's not all that dirty, and I know it's not. So I'm just going to work it around in there a little bit until it's as clean as you'd like it. And we'll come back after that. Up next, we're going to get in the back end there of that bolt carrier group where the firing pin goes, just to make sure that you're getting good primer strikes to take the carbon out of there. It'll take a lot of carbon buildup before that'll ever affect performance, but always good to keep it clean. So you're just going to work that around with whatever gun cleaning tool you have. And get that carbon off there because it does build up there a good bit. And uh, that's all you're going to do for that part. You can see there it comes out pretty nasty. So just keep working that around. And uh, that's pretty much it on your bolt carrier. We're going to go ahead and just wipe the outside down real quick. Up next, we'll put it back together. I'll show you some of the lubrication points for that guy. The part I forgot to mention earlier, guys, is the outside here of your uh, bolt. Just go ahead and wipe that down around the base because that's where a lot of that carbon builds up. If you guys have some sort of scraping tool like a Cat M4 or something like that, that works great. If not, just take one of your uh, cleaning tools, 
scrape it off until it's good to go. That's just normal cleaning. Again, that has nothing to do with the corrosive ammo that we're shooting out here today. So just keep scraping as normal. And uh, for real this time, we'll do the lubrication next. First thing we're gonna do here is take our CLP, which in this case is actually motor oil in ATF. Uh, it is, if for those of you guys that are wondering while I'm doing this, it is three parts, uh, mobile one, zero W20, full synthetic and uh, one part uh, Dextron 4, I believe, ATF, not synthetic. The synthetic does work, but that stuff stinks, man, like really bad. So anyway, we're gonna wet it down a patch and run that through the barrel just like you would on any typical AR there. Again, if you're using the little rods, use your rod, have at it. And uh, we're gonna run that through once, and we're just gonna leave it as a, uh, little protective layer in there if you will to keep breaking down that carbon whatever's left in there and that's it for the uh, for the barrel there up next we're going to go ahead into lubrication here on our bolt carrier group first thing we're going to do here is take our CLP or whatever lubricant we're using and go ahead and run it around the outside of your bolt there's a little there's a little rim right here and that's the part that's actually making contact with the uh, inside of the bolt carrier the majority of the time so make sure you lubricate around that part also on the tail here where all that carbon buildup was, go ahead and lubricate in there. That part doesn't actually come into contact with anything while your uh, firearm is in operation, but it is much, much easier to clean if you go ahead and put a coat of lubrication on there ahead of time. Um, this is the uh, Spikes Tactical uh, Nickel Boron, electros, Electrolyst Nickel Boron uh, carrier so and bolt, so it's a little bit easier to clean than most, but if yours is a standard bolt carrier group, Everything else is just going to apply. I lube it as normal even with this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, CLP down into your uh, bolt carrier there and slide that sucker in. Now there's only one way to do this correctly for those of you new guys out there and uh, that is with the extractor facing to the right on a right-handed gun unless you have a stag gun or something, stag arms, unless you have a stag left-handed. All your ARs are going to be this way, so the extractor is going to be facing your ejection port, okay? Now you're going to take your cam pin, which is this little sucker right here, put a little lubrication on him. We're going to go ahead and run that down right through the hole in your bolt. And that's a, kind of a good way to know you did it the right way, because if you do it, if your uh, extractor is facing the wrong way, you won't be able to get your cam pin in. It's kind of a military fail safe, if you will. Go ahead and you're going to pull your bolt forward. Now we're going to put our firing pin in there. Just drop it down in and it'll go all the way in. We're going to take our retainer pin that we took out earlier. I showed you the close up of and we're going to put it through the way it came out. It should only go in one way, guys. So put that through to retain your firing pin and your bolt. And there you go. Your bolt is good to go with the exception of the outside lubrication. I put it on the rails right here, which are these spots right here. And you guys, those of you guys that saw my uh, AR-15 standard cleaning video know grease is fine on here as well. On these nickel borons, I kind of think it's a little maybe overkill. And this motor oil will do just fine. So that is your bolt carrier group lubricated. We're going to take our charging handle that we had established was already clean earlier. We're going to go ahead and lubricate it. I lubricate it on all the points that are sticking up. So basically these two side pieces right here and the top piece, put a little drop of oil on each. And that will be, and I also put one on the inside for where that gas, uh, for the top of your bolt carrier rides in there. And uh, that's lubricated as well. I'm gonna go ahead, put these suckers back in. Go ahead and put your uh, charging handle in so it lines up with the holes and drops down a little bit. Put it about halfway in. Make sure your bolt is, is all the way extended out in your bolt carrier. Put that in, slide it forward, and your upper is assembled, cleaned, good to go. We're going to take our lower here, which we established is already clean. We're going to mate that back up, make sure your pins are all the way out. Line it up here to your upper. Push those pins through. Do a function check on the rifle by pulling back the charging handle. Release it. Put the weapon on fire. Press the trigger to the rear, hear it fire, hold the trigger to the rear, cycle the action once, release the trigger, and you hear that click, 
and your trigger reset, and that's how you know your gun is properly assembled. And that's pretty much it. Really the only thing I do after this is I just come back in about a day or two and check it, just pull everything apart, inspect, make sure that there is no rust in there, no uh, corrosion already starting up. If you see anything that looks blue on these ARs, that's probably some corrosion. You want to go ahead and wipe that area off again and uh, make sure that corrosion is not getting a chance to really start to build up and start to ruin the parts of your rifles. But all in all, guys, these are great rifles and a great cartridge that's even still in this today's market. Uh, still shoots a relatively cheap round, an accurate round, just good stuff. It's good fun, it's good training. It's an excellent rifle even on itself if you want to use it as a battle rifle, I guess you could say itself. Now I'm rambling about the rifle. Anyway, <laughs> back on topic, cleaning. I hope this answered uh, your questions about how to clean that corrosive crap out of these ARs. It's not too bad as you guys saw right there. If you don't have an air compressor, don't sweat it. Just let that part dry out um, and use hot, the hotter water the better. That way it'll evaporate quicker and uh, let, your ga let your gas tube dry out and you'll be good. Don't worry about it, don't sweat it. The uh, canned air or air compressor just helps speed the process along. Anyway guys, if you have any questions about this, what I did here today on this video, feel free to post in the comment sections. If you have any questions about anything else I review here on the channel, uh, feel free to post in the comment sections. You can also post over at my Facebook page. But um, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. If you guys like the video, click the like button. It does help us out here at the channel. And uh, hope to see you guys in the next video.